on Larry King Now, the acclaimed novelist Dennis Lehane. I like to play within form, so this is really my, my sort of Hitchcockian thriller. And I did three historicals prior to it, and Mystic River was my tragedy, and Shutter Island was my gothic. So my next one, I feel like a chase novel. I feel like doing a chase. I feel like doing just somebody running full out for the entire book. You were happy with Mystic River? Yeah, I was. It in was so far, great. In so far as you can be happy. I mean, you, you, what I what I was was I went all of the, I can judge it by parts. Each of the pieces look fantastic to me. I can't see it as a whole though. I never can. It was a hell of a movie. What makes Boston a character in so many good books and films? I have a theory that everybody in Boston is at least one can short of a six pack. We're all just a little <laughs> bit off. And and I, I just feel it and I feel it makes it a very vivid place. Plus, you know, every every time they ran a commercial for 60 minutes, there's Clinton carrying my book. And that that bumped it. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our special guest is New York Times best-selling author and screenwriter Dennis Lehane. Dennis has penned 13 acclaimed novels, most notably Mystic River, Gone Baby Gone, Shutter Island, Live by Night, all of which have been adapted into Hollywood films. His latest is Since We Fell. It's available now and guaranteed to be a bestseller because he is one great writer. This one, I just started it. I mm -hmm. got an advanced copy. The uh, protagonist is a woman. Yes. Yes. So you have to think like a woman. Yeah, a little bit. How did you come up with the idea? It, it was um, it How was was our ideas born? It, every, every book's different. With this one, I had an image. I had an image of a guy uh, re ref reflected in the glass. I don't know if you've ever... Uh, there's, a, there's a building in Boston called the Hancock Tower. I.M. Paid designed it. And it the has windows these, blew very, up. Yeah. And those windows are very... Um, how would I put this? Uh, they, there's something cinematic about those windows. And there's something cinematic about the way when you, when you walk down the street, you can see yourself, several versions of yourself. You know, you, pro you approach him before, you, and that was that idea, this multiple image of a guy walking out of the building in the rain. And then I said, okay, what's the image? And then I said, who's seeing it? And for some reason, I immediately went, his wife. And the, that was, from that point on, I was off to the races. I knew that was my lead character. And then it flows? Then it flows, it, it, you, you know, sometimes. Every book's different. And sometimes I get character first, and I kind of bang them around for a while, let them walk around and talk to each other. And after about two weeks, I say, would you go out and get me a plot? And usually they're pretty cool. And, they, you know, and then sometimes they come back with their pockets empty, and they're like, sorry. What was it like uh, being a woman for a while? You know, it wasn't that different. I think that the place where I, what I find hard to write, so... Um, Rachel was a very easy character for me to get into her skin and stay in her skin. Um, I, one of the other easiest characters I ever wrote was uh, Luther Lawrence, who was an African-American baseball player in the 1920s, in the given day. And I think it's not a matter of color, skin, or gender for me. It's, it's where do you stand in society? If you're on the outside, I can write you. If you're on the inside, I have trouble. Huh. So. Okay. About this book, the Washington Post said, a poignant story about a woman's search for identity wrapped in a love story. Fair? Until, yeah, until the guns show up in, in Act 3, and then it becomes wrapped in a thriller. I guess. So it turns to a thriller. Yeah, I think it starts, it starts always as a mystery, and then it turns by the end. The, f the final third is just a rocket ship. I mean, it was, meant, it was built that way. Do you think when you write, do you think film? No, I don't. Um, I think about it afterwards. We, look, we're all visual artists, so, but I always feel like the phrase, and I, I, I kick myself even for using it on the show, when people say um, you're a very cinematic writer, I say, that doesn't make any sense. We predate cinema. Cinema came from us. So, you know, Shakespeare was a very cinematic writer. Dumas was a very cinematic writer. Um, uh, Thomas Hardy was a very cinematic writer, but there was, they predated cinema. I think what it means is, are you vivid? And but unlike many writers who don't get involved with their films, hmm. don't get involved with the making of films regarded as apples and oranges, you get involved, right? No, I got involved with this. I've gotten involved with this one. I was a producer on Shutter Island and on The Drop. But um, in terms of Mystic River and Gone Baby Gone, I was, my law, and it's been my law ever since, 
is here's my cell phone, here's my email. If you want to talk to me, reach out. If you don't, I'm good. I'm not one of those writers. I remember a friend of mine who was a writer who said he was insulted when he didn't get invited to the set. And I said, well, why would they invite you to the set? I mean, you know, the caterer is far more important than you. Who <laughs> makes the coffee, you know? So, Were you happy with Mystic River? Yeah, I was. In was so far, great. Insofar as you can be happy. I mean, you, you, uh, what, I, what I was was I went, all of the, I can judge it by parts. Each of the pieces look fantastic to me. I can't see it as a whole, though. I never can. It's a hell of a movie. Thank you. I, people have told me. And Gone Baby Gone, uh, the thing oh. I love about Gone Baby Gone was I was the most distant from the actual book in terms of time. So the book had been written quite some time ago. So when Ben Affleck came to town and we went out, he was showing me pictures of all these people in the movie. And he was saying, this is going to be cool. We're doing this. And then gradually his eyes narrowed and he said, you don't know what I'm talking about. And I said, no, I really don't. He goes, you don't remember your own characters? And I was like, Ben, I wrote that book 10, 10 years ago. You know, no, I don't remember it anymore. So um, I, I think that I, I could enjoy Gone Baby Gone in a way almost like a viewer. Because I was like, I wonder what's going to happen next. Because I didn't remember. Now, Shutter Island, you were a producer on, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mike Metavoy. Yeah, yeah. Good guy. Fantastic. What a movie that was. You had to be happy with that. It turned out it was, great. I mean... It was true to the book. Very true to the book. Very true to the book. And then yet also, it's filtered through that, that vision, which is Marty's vision, you know, Scorsese's vision, which is not mine. And so he's channeling, like he, he told me later, he was channeling Val Luton movies in the 1940s. And... And, and so it's a totally different experience. It's not Shutter Island. It's Dennis Lehane's Shutter Island is on a shelf. Martin Scorsese's Shutter Island is, is in your film school. What makes Boston a character in so many good books and films? It's the great, look, I'm a homer. Everybody from Boston is, I mean, we're all, we're all diseased. Like the departed. Yeah, it's just a fun city. I mean, it's a fun city to write about. It's a, we have a, I, th I have a theory that Everybody in Boston is at least one can short of a six pack. We're all just a little <laughs> bit off. And and I, I just feel it and I feel it makes it a very vivid place. And it's just a It's so good, the town. Yep, the town was terrific. And then even the th things that don't deal with sort of that the criminal element of things, um, you know, even the social network's a terrific film. I mean, you know, there's just something something about yeah. shooting in that city and it's just yeah, it's great. Who's gonna play Rachel? Don't know. I have no idea. But it definitely will be a movie. We don't know it'll definitely be a movie. It is definitely a script. It is definitely out to directors. It is, it, it, I could see it, you know, easily going into production, but it's not there yet. Next, does Dennis Lehane ever suffer from writer's block? Plus, what other novelists ever inspire him? The new one is Since We Fell. Guaranteed bestseller, great writer. We'll be right back. We're back with Dennis Lehane. His new book is Since We Fell. And you're, you're only 51, right? Yeah. That's and it. this is your 13th. It's my 13th novel, yeah. Yeah. We, did you ever write for a newspaper or something? Did you ever, were you Michael Connolly? No, no. Uh, uh, Michael and I actually were, were in South Florida at the same time. I was yeah. in grad school, and he was at the uh, Sun Sentinel. Uh, but we, we didn't cross paths back He's then. a hell of a writer. He's great. He's terrific. Um, so, uh, I did a little tiny bit of journalism, but I, I didn't do much. Um, when I was in grad school, I did some. Uh, but... How'd you decide to be a novelist? You know, I tried, journal I tried journalism. I tried to major in journalism, and I realized I, I didn't like facts, and that was a problem for journalists back then. <laughs> so, I dropped out there, and then I, then I said, all right, I'm going to try and, try and teach. I'll, get an I'll be an English lit. And so then I discovered after a year doing that that I didn't like really talking about books. To this day, I don't think I'm a good literature teacher. I'm a good writing teacher, but I, I'll just say, read that book, and it's great. And they'll say, why? And I'll say, because it is. You know? <laughs> no. So then I said, all right, look, at this point, let's face the fact. You're only good at one thing, and you only like one thing, and that's making up stories. So I went to my, pa my poor immigrant parents, and I said, all right, I'm going to try for a third college you know, and do this creative writing thing. And they said... You know, could you get it? Can you get a job with that? And I didn't know any better, so I said, "Yeah," but you can't. I mean, a bachelor's degree in creative writing literally qualifies you for one thing in this world, and that's a master's degree in creative writing. So, hmm. I I uh, kind of went off on this journey that then took me to 
about 28, and then I, I published my first book. I got my first book published when I was just, yeah, when I was 28. So what was your first hit? My first hit was, had a real, it was a hit within a certain way. Gone Baby Gone, because not that it sold a ton, but it sold at a time when they were sure nobody would, nobody would buy it, because it came out in the summer, it had a very dark cover and a very dark subject matter, and 80% of book buyers are women, and they said, no woman wants to read a book about a kid in peril. And it was a hit, and reasonably. It was within its own context, it was a hit. And part of that was because President Clinton, by that point, um, uh, had, he was videoed walking up, to, walking up the steps to Air Force One with it under his arm. And it was used on an ad for 60 Minutes, because he was going to be on that weekend. And so, you know, every, every time they ran a commercial for 60 Minutes, there's Clinton carrying my book. And that, that bumped it. But then my first hit was Mr. Griver. That was the first one that it was like, oh, this is what it's like. I'd never been on a New York Times bestseller list. I'd never had the sort of attention that I'd had before. Do you form your characters early, and do they do what you want them to do before you start the book? No. No, I form them early. I, don't, I wouldn't say they do what I want them to do. Have you had a character die before you wanted him to die? No, I've suddenly realized the character was going to die, and I was like, oh, I didn't know that was coming. Uh, I spent an entire book trying to make sure the character didn't die. And then I hated the book, and I wouldn't release it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give it to my publisher. I wouldn't anything. What's the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? And then one night I was having a conversation with the, one of my idols, the writer Tim O'Brien. And we were just talking, and, and he said, you know, I like that your stuff always stays organically true. And, and I went, bing, that's it. I'm trying to avoid what needs to happen, what should happen, because I'm attached to the character. And right after that phone conversation, I hung up, and I said, he's got to die. And I went back and I rewrote the end of the book, and then I was like, there it is, it's good. I handed it in. What book was it? Uh, World Gone By, my last one, prior to this. So I just, we just did a spoiler. So anybody who hasn't read World Gone By, um, <laughs> it doesn't end well. So. The uh, term creative writing, isn't that a kind of contradiction? Yeah, it's, you know, look, they got to How do you figure, teach creative? You don't. You give them a toolbox. That's all you can do. You give them a toolbox. Show them how to use the tools. But you can't, you can't plant the fire. You can't, you know. You fall in love with your characters? All the time. All the time. I fall in love with some of the ones who everybody's like, wow, that's a bad, bad guy, or that's a bad, bad girl, or whatever it is. But I, I think it's some of my favorite characters or some of my worst people. In Mystic River, mm. when Sean Penn screams yeah. at the thought of his daughter being Yeah, killed, is that my daughter? And the scream goes up into the sky. And yeah. It was incredible. It was, and Sean, Sean and I hung out a lot when we were making that movie, and a lot of talks about that, just that, that particular scene. And I still remember him saying, you know, I'm storing it up, I'm not going there yet, I'm not going there yet. And, and then when it came time to do that scene, I mean, we were all in awe when, he was shoot, when they were shooting that. Um, one of the extras, I think, if memory serves, one of the extras who was, trying to play, who was playing a cop who was trying to grab him actually got, like, tagged, like, like Sean's elbow hit him or something like that because he was just went so crazy. He just went so into it. And then Kevin Bacon. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> when we return, is there another Dennis Lehane book in the works? We'll find out. And I'll tell you about another thing he's doing with a Stephen King novel. Don't go away. We're back with the great Dennis Lehane. The new one is Since We Fell. It is almost a guaranteed bestseller. It will be, a, I'm sure it'll be a film, right? We think so. We okay. think so. There's a script. Writing is a lonely profession. Uh, Red Smith once said, writing is easy. Put a piece of paper in a typewriter, roll it up, mm -hmm. and bleed. And bleed, yeah. Yeah. Is it tough? Yeah, if it's good, it should be. Yeah. I think it is. I think if you're doing, if it's too easy, you, you, you're being glib, you're being facile, you're skating the surface, you know? If you're good, it should be a little, or if the book's good, it should get painful, it should get thorny, it should get difficult. It should get, it should start to cost you a little bit. I do believe that. Does it bug you when a writer sells a hundred million books? No. And the cat, no, and the characters are never developed, but the, the plot's good, and it, Patterson. No, we, James we, this James Patterson, is... they roll along, the book comes out every two months. Great, there's room under the tent for all of it. 
So we're running the tent for all of it. He's doing the book with Clinton now. And I know, and, and you know, I know people who's, let me, let me put this in, in a perspective that I really get, you know. Um, there are people, there are authors whose careers have been allowed to continue, even though they don't sell much, at that publishing house, because James Patterson makes the house so much money. So, you know, there's a, there's a place for all of it under the tent. I just feel like, um, you know, there's different types of writings. I know Jim. I know Jim. I know Jim. He's been here. Yeah. Is it easy to write the way he writes? I don't know. I don't write you that way. I, <laughs> I don't write that way. So I, it wouldn't be for me. Let me put it that way. It would not be for me at all. If I'm not 100%, 100% engaged that this is the only story I want to tell and this is the only possible story I can tell, then I can't write. I just have to fall in love with what I'm doing. Now, you're doing, a, with Mr. David Kelly, mm -hmm. a 10-part series of Stephen King's book, Mr. Mercedes. Yes. For yeah. HBO? No, for... Um, uh, Direct TV uh, and oh, their own direct. They have yeah, their yeah. Own. They're gonna they're gonna have their own. This is their rollout. So, do you like the writing? There's another guy wrote the book. Yep. How did you get involved with this? Oh, uh, David's uh, David and I have the same agent, and uh, he he reached out, and I went in, I met with him, and it just seemed uh, it seemed a really nice match. Um, not just me and David, but S Stephen. I know Stephen's work really well. And this book, in particular, is in my wheel. Really hits my wheelhouse because it's about sort of the America that got left behind after the uh, 2008 meltdown, and set in the Midwest, and set in a, an unnamed city in Ohio. So, all of this, th this was the people I I understand. This is this is the world I, I understand. So there were three writers, though, right? Yeah, uh, my uh, well, there's four. There's myself, uh, a guy named um, Brian Golyuboff, uh, David Kelly. And uh, A.M. Holmes, and so we're all, uh, we, you know, we're all having the time of our lives. It's great. You each write a different section of them. Um, yeah, we've written. We, you know, David wrote a couple. A.M. wrote one. Uh, Brian's written three. I wrote four. Um, you know, it's just been. And then the way it works in shows. This was always a case. That, when I worked on The Wire, we always used to have a running joke that if somebody came up and complimented you on a scene, it was somebody else's. <laughs> because what happens is, like, you'll, you'll write an episode, you write episode three, and then you go and you film it, or you, or you get to the production stage of it, and then somebody says, well, wait a minute, that scene, we need to pull that scene out of three, put it into four, pull that scene out of two, and put it into three. And that happens a lot. <laughs> and so it's just the nature of the beast. And, and then some, someone will come up and they'll say, I love that line. And, you know, see, you know, season three where you wrote that, and I'll be like, no, nah, Richard Price wrote that. <laughs> it wasn't me. So, Since we fell is out now, is there another one in the works? Are you always natal. writing? No, I'm, I'm in very natal stage on the next one. I leave everything on the field book by book. That's why I only produce a book every two years. After I finish a book, I got nothing in the tank, ever. There's nothing ever. in your mind? Yeah, there's something in my mind now. I have a story, I think. Cool. I think. I, I like to play within form. So this is really my, my sort of Hitchcockian thriller. And I did three historicals prior to it. And Mystic River was my tragedy. And Shutter Island was my gothic. So my next one, I feel like a chase novel. I feel like doing a chase. I feel like doing just somebody running full out for the entire book. Um, and that's my next thought. We'll play a little game of If You Only Knew. I'll just throw some questions. OK. First great book you read. First great book I read, The Three Musketeers. Last great book you read. Last great book, Exit West. Guilty Pleasure. Uh, I, I don't know if this is a guilty pleasure. No, I'll say it. Lana Del Rey. Not bad. Writer we should all be paying more attention to. Daniel Woodrell. Secret talent. I'm a good pool player. Favorite writer ever. Richard Price. Favorite novel character of all time? Novel? Binks Bowling from the moviegoer. Rock of Percy. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Um, the ability to see into the future. Yeah, I'd want to be invisible. Oh, that's good. Biggest risk you've taken? Biggest risk I've taken? Um, geez. That's a tough call. Uh, I think they've all kind of worked out. So <laughs> I would say at the time, if you look back now, the biggest ri risk I took in my career was certainly Mr. Quiver. If you were a writer, what would you be? 
carpenter. Tell me something people don't know about you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Lehane in 10 years. Uh, hopefully doing exactly what I'm doing now. Maybe uh, my only final ambition would be maybe to run a show. Fully, straight up. Or be in charge yeah. of everything. Be in charge of everything, yeah. That's about it. Do you, uh, you, do you like, would you like to direct a film? No, I directed a film once, a long time ago. Yeah, I did. Uh, I never saw the light of day. I took everything I made from my first book, and I made it in a little indie for $28,000. I destroyed myself financially, and I made it. Um, but it ultimately, I never saw the light of day, and it taught me something. I was a good director. I was good enough, but I didn't love it. I, love, I think you have to love it, and I didn't love it. I love writing. In our final moments with the great Dennis Lehane, we'll take your questions from social media. Stick with us. The book is Since We Fell. We're back with Dennis Lehane. The new one is Since We Fell. We have some social media questions. Grant S. on the Larry King Now blog. Who do you think the most underrated writer is today? The most underrated writer? Um, yeah, I, said, I would say Daniel Woodrow. Yeah. Well, you know, he doesn't sell a lot of books, and no. people don't, I didn't know the name. Yeah, I mean, the, he's somewhat famous for, a, a, I mean, he's, the, what he's known for is the, the one, uh, is one movie called Winter's Bone, which was Jennifer Lawrence's big break. Oh, yeah, that was a good movie. Yeah, that's, that was based on one of his books. I think he's brilliant. Grant also asked, do you think being a good writer is inborn or learned? I think it's, I think there's a little both in play. I think you can have, you got to have some sort of talent, or why would you do it? But after that, it's all work. It's all work. You gotta learn your craft. You know, talents, a little bit of talent's not enough. So if I have a great idea, could you teach me to turn that into a book? No, no. I can teach you the discipline and I can teach you, I can, again, I can teach you, a, I can give you a toolbox. I can, show you, I can show you how to write a clean sentence. I can show you a little bit about structure. I can show you why a scene might not be working. You know, but I can't, I can't write it for you. At Farley 14, H14, in Shutter Island, was it all in Leo's head, or did it really happen? I hate to break the heart of a 14-year-old, but it's the one question I never answer about my work. I will never explain the ending of Shutter Island. Never? Never. You know what it is. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Corey Anderson on the Larry King Now blog, of all your books, what was the most difficult to write? The given day, uh, because of this, just the scope of it and the size of it and the time it took, was would be number one. Second, close second was Mystic River. And Mystic River was hard. Why? Um, because I, it was it, it was very ambitious, and I knew that if I missed if I missed the mark, that I was going to be stuck writing a certain type of book, which I did not want, which was the series. You know, I'd written five books in a series, and so there was a lot on the table for that. And you had three characters too, right? Yeah, and three. Well, four if you count the wife of yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Dave's wife. So uh, I had that. It was also a very deeply. It was everything I knew both about writing and the world in which I had grown up in, crammed into one book. So that was a lot. Drew Butner on Facebook. Most of your novels are suspense and mystery. Have you ever thought about writing something lighter, like a comedic novel? No, I've thought of writing something quieter. A lot. I think about writing every now and then. I think about, you know, it's so funny. My friend Colm Tobin wrote wrote uh, the book Brooklyn, and and that is the type of thing that I was actually thinking about. The one that was made into a movie. Yeah, and that's that's m basically the story of my mother's life. And so I was I was floating around an idea like that. And then I was like, he did it. You know, like he can't do it now. So, uh, but it would be. I I feel like there's something in my parents' past. That, that there's a quiet novel in there. And I, I, I just, I'm thinking about it. But, but at the end of the day, you know, no. A comedy, never. Which is weird, because I'm a pretty comic guy, but. Do you read as pleasure, or do you read with, where's this guy going, and I think I know where he's going? No, I read with total pleasure. I'm your, I am your dream audience. I still read like a nine-year-old. <laughs> I never guess anything. I never know where something's going. I just sit there. I'm like, you know, I, I, I just want to be um, enraptured. KJM1016 on Twitter. What book are you currently reading? 
this stinks because I can't remember the name of the title. The title's really bothering me. It's, it's something to the blood. Um, hmm. It's David Grant's book about um, about the murder of, of a bunch of American Indians in the, in the 1920s and the formation of the FBI. Um, oh, really? Yeah, the modern day FBI, and, and it's it's a bestseller. I just can't I just can't Do remember the name. Do you read uh, nonfiction as well? That it, that is nonfiction. I, I read primarily nonfiction. I don't read much. I, you know, it's. It, I would say one of my best buddies is a contractor, and the last house, last thing he ever does is go home and work on his own house, and and that's the way I feel about fiction. It's like I think about fiction all the time. I'm writing fiction all the time. It's spinning in my head all the time. I don't want to read it. I want to take a break. Someone once said, if you want to know the history of an era, read its fiction. I agree. I agree. E. L. Doctorow said a book is about the time in which it was written not the time in which it was set. Paul Raphael on the Larry King Now blog, was there ever an actor you wanted to play a character in your book who declined? Oh, you mean in an adaptation? Yeah. Um, not that I know of, but I wouldn't know what the casting situation was. I do know that, that um, I'll just give you a perfect example, the one actor who I've thought for years, for years, I'm like, if that guy didn't exist, I would have created him. Like, he's just so perfect for my world, is the Irish actor Brendan Gleeson. And then he showed up in Live By Night playing Ben Affleck's father, and now he's the lead in Mr. Mercedes. So that's a really nice journey because I can write for him, I can hear his voice in my head, I can write directly to him, and it's a joy. So The co-star in Shutter Island is now a big hit on Broadway. Mark Ruffalo? What an actor he is. What a performance. Nobody sees that performance. That performance is, has to work on three levels. It's, it's an astonishing piece of work, and Mark never calls attention to himself as an actor, so he, you don't get, he doesn't get the raves, I think. He's like Matt Damon in that way. I don't think he quite gets the raves because he makes it look so effortless. Yeah, boy, does he. Yeah. Leonardo is... Uh, it's Leonardo, you better be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to be on your game. Yeah, and, you know, Michelle Williams. I mean, that was a pretty hardcore cast. Ben Kingsley. There uh, you go. Ben, ben, he was just here. Thanks. Thanks to our guest, author Dennis Lehane. Be sure to pick up a copy of his newest novel, Since We Fell. It's available now. And as always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time.